Salah is third. Salah Salah is third. Focus today on the new navigation rules introduced this year for Richard Ponce, co-driver of Jutta Kahn-Schmidt, is our guide to understand everything about it. The main change is due to the fact that the GPS is far less important. No, more GPS points, like last year, just a few of them, hidden waypoints. As a result, navigation is much more difficult, as explained by the co-driver. Nel raggio dei 3 km uh, di apparizione del waypoint maschè devi waypoint, cercarlo e quindi it. parti in tutte le direzioni e c'è chi ha forse un pelino più di esperienza che parte in quella giusta, right va, lo cerca, lo trova, lo prende e, e riparte c'è chi, a questo senso, forse non ce l'ha e quindi comincia ad andare in tutte le direzioni dell'arcobaleno competitors get the road work on the following day when they finish a stage then the co-driver works on it for four to five hours the lack of lavoro coi colori perché eh, quando well, I work using many stanco, colors explained e dopo magari 3 400 km sei stanco that, uh, magari hai la concentrazione tired, well, che che vacilla leggermente i colori ti aiutano a, a comunque a porre la tua attenzione sul, sui punti pericolosi, sui punti difficili. And after the road book is prepared for Brissa Ponce, as all the co-drivers go to the daily briefing at 9 o'clock, where the organization gives important information for the next day's stage. Al briefing uh, ci danno il codice GPS, il next step è di uh, introdurre il, il codice GPS nel, nei GPS della macchina, vedere che ci siano tutti i punti, controllare che tutti i punti che ci sono nel GPS siano quelli che tu hai segnato sul tuo radar. The longest stage of the rally for the competitors on four wheels and probably the toughest goes to 600 k's of special for Nanny Roma and all the other drivers. The Spaniard was to suffer. He eventually finished the day losing 52 minutes and 39 seconds. A hell of a blow to the former bike winner. Mark Miller, third of the previous stage, started third but immediately found it hard to follow the big gun. He was overtaken by both Mitsubishis and then by Mignaldi and Schlesser. He eventually lost over an hour on the day's winner. Jean-Louis Schlesser in his Ford buggy had to stop with electronical problems just after overtaking Mark Miller stuck in the sand. And he suffered mechanical problems on his V8 engined Schlesser Ford buggy. The Frenchman was eventually able to carry on on the way to Kiffa but lost precious time he was still expected on the finish line of the special. And off went the two-time Dakar winner. And Schlesser was eventually to be caught by Bruno Sabi, another Dakar winner back in the 90s. But the Frenchman also struggled on the day, close to an hour off the winning pace once on the finish line of the special. Again, fantastic sceneries today for this final stage in Mauritania before heading to Mali and the impressive dune landscapes of Mauritania. Janelle de Villiers of South Africa was looking good all the way to the first CP, clinching the third fastest time. He eventually managed a decent special only 28 minutes adrift. Utah Klein Schmidt, 
still hoping to win a special on this Dakar. She struggled in the sand. She crossed the finish line with a 49 minute deficit, but still was a real showwoman. Cherry Manialdi, a big crash for stage, the stage eight winner, destroying the front part of his buggy. Time loss for the Frenchman, one hour, 15 seconds. Back with the German, Utah Kleinschmidt, winner of the Dakar back in 2001. She lost close to 50 minutes on the day. She's now fourth overall. 49 minutes off the pace. And bumpy action in the cockpit of the race to our egg two. But the big winners of the day were, without the slightest doubt, the Mitsubishis. Luc Alphon lost time in the dunes, but his goal was to stay as close as possible of teammate and overall leader Stéphane Peterancel. The former skier did his best all the way to Kiffa, but still lost 8 minutes and 44 seconds. Looking impressive in his Pajero Evo, but he too was to get stuck in the sands. Very, very soft sands indeed today between Nuak Shot and Kiffa, and time to get the shovels out and give the car a good push. The helping hand of Luc Alphonse co-driver, Gilles Picard. Precious for navigation, but also for shoveling. Very, very soft, soft sand explains uh, Luc Alphonse. And he does, certainly doesn't like that. But the big winner of the day was again Stéphane Peterancel. He proved he was the master of the Dakar. Stopping in the dunes certainly wasn't a problem for the double title holder who, who flew to a 51st stage success. 33 on a bike and now 18 on four wheels. Already a winner of stages going to Tantan and Zwerat. The Frenchman becomes the new record holder of special wins on the Dakar. Fantastic stuff from the overall leader who increases his lead on teammate Luc Alphon now over nine minutes. He too was stuck in the sand, certainly not a problem. Looking very, very comfortable behind the steering wheel of his Pajero Evo. Only slight problems since the beginning of the rally for Stéphane Poitrancel. A puncture in Portugal, a few punctures on African soil. He was stuck in the sand two days ago and again today. But he proved he was the fastest and on his way to a possible treble, a third victory in Dakar. Carlos Sainz certainly thought he could manage the best performance of the day after his mechanical worries two days ago. The Spaniard started 82nd today, was third at the first two checkpoints, then fastest at CP3, but it all went wrong after that and was still expected on the finish line. Henri Piscarolo, looking good in his buggy. He too was uh, expected on the finish line. 
alongside his uh, co-driver, explaining that he uh, fractured a backbone. So it's uh, very painful to drive in these conditions. Vertebra pr problems for the Dakar veteran. Still very courageous. He uh, was explaining that uh, he tries to drive as calmly and softly as possible. Not to be in too much pain. Carlos Souza looking impressive there in his uh, Nissan pickup. But rather disappointing on the day. He was still expected on the finish line. In other words, only seven cars had made it to the finish. The leader of the production class, Rati, is certainly hoping to keep his crown. So victory number 51 for Stéphane Péterancel with an 8 minutes and 44 second lead on Luc Alphand. And then all the others, Genil de Villiers, 28 minutes of drift. In the overall standings, the first two Mitsubishis have close to one hour on the first Volkswagen, that of Genil de Villiers. To the bike, sorry, the truck race and problem for the title holder, Ferdaus Kabirov, winner of last year's edition, stranded in the dunes, mechanical problems for the Russian transmission problems. And a serious crash for two-time special winner this edition, Hans Stacey the Dutchman, and almost race over for Stacey. We were uh, trying to pass over the dune and I started trying to shift the gear and uh, committed a mistake and well, we rolled over. It's just bad luck. Bad luck indeed for the Dutchman who is still, still trying to make it to the finish line but hopes of a possible podium are fading away. Truck of Hans Stacy was eventually back on its four wheels, but seriously bruised and battered. Out, out. By an assistance truck. Reparation time for Stacy, who no longer seems to be dangerous in the overall for the Kamaz team. So problem for Stacey, problem for Kabirov who is still expecting his assistance truck. It was looking good for six special winner Vladimir Chagin who too was expected on the finish line of the stage in Kippa. Tomorrow the rally leaves Mauritania and heads to its fifth country, Mali, a shorter 333 kilometers special including 383 kilometers of timed effort. The vegetation thickens, more dirt tracks and speed, also more villages to be crossed. Bikers and drivers will have to uh, be very careful with speed. A real transition day on the Dakar. Well that's it from Kiffa, from the Dakar. Again, all our thoughts are for the family and friends of Andy Caldecott, who passed away today on the stage going from Nuakshot to Kiffa.